This Kelloland Living segment is sponsored by Avera Health. Moving health forward. No one wants to talk about it, much less prepare for the test that could result in an early diagnosis that could save your life. We're talking about colorectal cancer, and because March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, we're not only going to be talking about it today, we're also going to be showing you how easy the test is that screens for it. Dr. Adam Smith is a gastroenterologist with Avera Medical Group. He's here to explain why the age you need to start having a colonoscopy has been lowered. He's also going to share signs you should look for that could clue you into a serious health concern. We should warn you that we will be showing a colonoscopy in this segment, so if you don't want to see it, listen from another room because we've got good information you need to hear. Welcome. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit more about colorectal cancer and the test that just nobody really ever wants to have. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things right where mm -hmm. It's easy to put it out of, out of your mind if you don't think you have any signs or symptoms. And it's kind of, it's kind of a harder test to do. It's, it's harder to do than like a mammogram, right? Correct. So let's talk about just the cancer itself and kind of by the numbers and what we're seeing for people who are diagnosed. Okay. So colon cancer is very common. Um, it's the second kind of leading cause of cancer-related death in the United States and in all patients. And it's the third most common cause of cancer in the United States as well. And so also you've pointed out that the risk of colon cancer is the, actually the number one cause of cancer death in patients under age 50. Under age 50. So under age 50, it's actually the number one cause of death. And 60% of those deaths are preventable. Why aren't we actually preventing them? Well, uh, anytime you're talking about doing a, a cancer prevention strategy, they have to take into account getting people to actually do it and then also um, some of the risks of doing any kind of prevention strategy. So, um, but a lot of that is being looked at and, and talking about reducing those numbers in patients under age 50 because uh, up until recently we started screening patients only starting at age 50. Okay, so what is the age mm -hmm. that we are screening, we need to be starting that colonoscopy screening now? So it just recently changed in the last year <clears throat> um, to age 45. Uh, there's a couple different societies that we use to look at uh, di different forms of cancer screening, cancer prevention strategies, uh, and two of the uh, ones that two of the companies that look for cancer screening strategies have lowered that. One is the American College of Gastroenterology, and then the other is uh, United States Preventative Services Task Force, and they both lowered that from age 50 down to age 45 in the last year. So why why do we need to lower the the age? Are, you just, is, are we seeing just a lot of people in that gap, that five year gap, that we're having more incidence of cancer, col colorectal cancer, just needing to start screening a little earlier? Right. So the in general, the incidence of colon cancer, the number of patients that have colon cancer has been going down in the group that we've been screening for in those age 50 and older. But on the other side of things, we've seen a lot, uh, almost a doubling of cancer-related deaths in patients in that lower age range, in the age range from 45 to, to 50. And so the idea would be, too, that if we screen earlier, we would even pot potentially continue to lower the number of cancers that we find in patients after age 50. Okay, let's talk about the actual process of getting a colonoscopy too, and we have a video. We're going to share some of this with our audience too, so you can kind of walk us through what we can expect. I'm, I'm not yet to the age, thankfully, but I'll be, <laughs> I'll be hitting there soon, so yeah. let's talk a little bit about this. Okay. So when you go in for a colonoscopy, just walk me through the process. Uh, so when you come in and people have already prepared for the exam uh, by taking some medications and also uh, by avoiding certain types of food for a couple of days before the exam uh, and then when you come in you uh, get an IV put in place they put several monitors on you and you can see on the screen that they're looking at things like heart rate and how how well you're breathing uh, and then you brought into an endoscopy suite where there's lots of screens and equipment and then um, You'll, after we kind of introduce everybody that's, that's there, uh, the nurse and the uh, anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist, um, to make you sleepy and comfortable, they'll give you some medications, kind of get you resting off well, and then uh, once you're nice and comfortable, then we would go forward with doing the exam. 
And you're not actually, so in terms of like anesthesia with a colonoscopy, it's not the same as being completely put under into general anesthesia, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. You're breathing on your own, um, and that's what all those monitors are doing to make sure that you're continuing to breathe well on your own. So. But you won't remember this. Right. Okay. Sleepy and, um, sleepy and uh, comfortable. Some patients will, can wake up for very short periods of time, and then they get just more medication to okay. make them comfortable. Okay, so now the colon cancer, colorectal cancer, is a really slow growing cancer from what I understand. So if you are taking these steps, the preventative steps, and you're doing the screening, everything comes back clear, what do you need to do as a follow-up, or how long do you have until you need to do this again? Right, so it's a very slow growing process in most cases, in most individuals, uh, and it typically starts off as, let's call it a colon polyp, just a very small growth in the colon lining. Um, and so that takes several, several years to, to go, and so if you have no polyps, even down to small polyps, like one or two millimeters in size, uh, then we can delay any type of screening with colonoscopy again for 10 years. So pretty, I mean, so you got to get it done, but then you've got a while before you have to do it again. Right. Now, let's say you do have some polyps, some very small polyps. Would, that's super treatable. Okay, so what would be yeah. the process if you do discover that you have some things happening? Right, so if you have um, polyps that are, that are removable during the exam, we remove them during the same test since you've already done the preparation, you're already getting the sedation, and you're already there getting the exam done. Um, so we would remove them at the same time. Most of the time that's very safe and happens very yeah. quickly. Um, and it's, again, it's not painful after you wake up. It's not like recovering from any kind of surgery or anything like that. So, so let's talk about some of the risks you might see, the signs you might be seeing, you know, outside of actually doing the preventative screening. Okay, sure. Um, so, you know, doing preventative screening, obviously we do screening because we don't want to see any of these signs because they can typically mean that things are more advanced or more, more concerning. But uh, things that we would be seeing are things like changes in how you're going to the bathroom, if you're having troubles going to the bathroom or going to the bathroom too much, or if you're starting to see any blood in your stools or changes to the stool color. Those kinds of things can be evident that maybe something's going on, even though the most likely scenario is something that's benign, non-cancerous. It's always something that we want to make sure that we're getting checked out. So. Because at that point, if you are having these symptoms, it is probably more advanced than, than you know, just having that preventative screening. So you really want to get it checked out right away. Right, exactly. That's why we want to pr push kind of prevention because um, those signs happen later in the disease course because the colon is, um, can keep doing its job even with th these polyps kind of in place. So. All right, so it's, it is a aware, colorectal cancer awareness month right now. So 60% of the deaths that happen are preventable. That means anybody watching right now, if they're at that 45 years or have any risk factors, they need to call and get that set up right away, right? Right, right. That would be the best thing for it. All right, make sure that we um, decrease the number of preventable deaths. There you go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here and for everything that you do and for bringing awareness to a topic. We don't really like to talk about that right, often. Right, Not everybody wants to talk about it, but it's what we do every day, and so it's... it's uh, maybe uncomfortable for our patients a little bit, but we try and put them at ease as much as we can. So. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Avera is dedicated to providing the best possible health care to their patients. If you have a question about colonoscopy screening or would like to find a location nearest you to schedule a colonoscopy, you can find out more online at avera.org slash gut health. You can also call toll free to schedule a colonoscopy. That number is 1-888-422-1410. This Kelloland Living segment has been sponsored by Avera Health, moving health forward.